to boldly go where no dove has gone before. As the creator of Star Trek, your father coined one of the most iconic phrases associated with space, to boldly go. What did that mission mean to your father? What is really amazing about Star Trek is it really wasn't just a show about people going into space and exploring. It was really a, a, an idea of what humanity could become one day. Mike, with that in mind, could you tell us about Planet's mission? So Planet's mission is to use space to help life on Earth. We design, build, and operate a fleet of remote sensing satellites, and we've launched hundreds of them uh, over the course of the company's history. And the idea is to monitor the Earth so that we can better take care of it. I, I think there's a lot of strong alignment with the, the Star Trek philosophy and using space and technology to allow for life and, and diversity and, and the planet um, and beyond to flourish. And in what ways do you see the missions of Star Trek and planet coming together? So um, applications in agriculture, or mapping or monitoring deforestation. There's all kinds of really cool things that we're doing and we're trying to do it in a really thoughtful way. And I think that one of the things that you can certainly say about Star Trek, is it's a very thoughtful um, series. It's a, it's a very thoughtful approach to how would we explore um, this, this universe that we live in. Like Planet has put a lot of satellites into orbit. We launch all the time. But it's my understanding that this next launch has something special, something unique. Can you tell us about that? What's really special about this upcoming launch is that we've partnered with the Roddenberry Foundation and collected quotes from fans, which we've then laser etched on the sides of these satellites that are going up into orbit on this upcoming launch. So that is really cool to see this kind of full circle Star Trek fandom getting back into space with the hope and uh, vision for the future that uh, the series has inspired. So how do satellites get into space? Well, there's uh, a couple of different ways. Typically, uh, we, we build small satellites. So we can either launch on, on a big rocket and take up a small amount of space and, and do it as a ride share with a bunch of other payloads, or there's one big satellite and then we'll sit in the corner. Even when we're launching dozens of satellites, we might only take up a small portion of that rocket or we can go on a, on a dedicated small launch vehicle, but typically we're going up into space on these rockets. And Mike, probably the most important one, how do satellites help us? So our satellites are seeing the entire Earth every day. And you just can't do that when you're on the ground or flying airplanes or, or flying balloons. There are certain applications that you really need that global perspective. And so we operate satellites in, uh, with a remote sensing mission. We're trying to image the Earth and illuminate change so we can see deforestation before it starts uh, happening in, irreversible, in, in an irreversible way. Or we're trying to monitor crops so that uh, farmers can, can better take care of their fields and, and grow food for a growing population. Decades later, the internet is still buzzing about Star Trek. Rod, what inspired Star Trek? My father really saw the world and he got to experience different cultures and different points of view and people on all uh, sides of the, the spectrum in terms of uh, society. And I think when you have that sort of um, ability and experience and, and to, to see the, the range of what humans can be at our best and our worst, it does give you the perspective. And using that, he thought of the future and he thought of what would be the most, uh, what could we be? one day, what is our potential? And that's what Star Trek does. It shows us who we could be in the future. Best captain, Kirk, Picard, Janeway, or Cisco? You know, uh, out of that selection, I'm 100% Picard, but I have to say uh, Anson Mount in the new Star Trek series, Strange New Worlds, does an incredible job playing Captain Pike. What Star Trek technology do you wish actually existed today? So I, I love the replicator. Um, the idea that one day we can control things atomically and, and build using the atomic structure and essentially create anything we need. Mike, what excites you most about the satellite industry? And specifically, where is Planet headed? So we are getting better and better at taking raw pixels and extracting insights from them so that you don't have to be a, a PhD a road sensing analyst to be able to get the usefulness from, from this data, we want, we have to do a lot of work 
to analyze the data, extract the insights, look at different spectral bands, look at different resolutions, different places all around the world, and then synthesize that in a way that policymakers can understand, that a farmer on a field can understand, that even school children can understand, because we have to get a better sense of what's going on in the planet so that we can be take better care of it. Uh, how do we take that information and put it in the hands in front of people who understand how to read it and then make informed decisions about what they want to do now that they have that information.